Montage seeks to take shots that are single in meaning, neutral in content, and combine them to make intellectual contexts and series. Let's talk film! <laughs> My name's Lauren and I'm a film student who wants to share what I'm passionate about with you. As the name indicates, this is a weekly series, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next Film Friday. Today, I'll be talking about the Soviet filmmaker Sergei Eisenstein, sorry if I mispronounced the name, and his famous theory of montage. Eisenstein is known primarily for his works The Battleship Potemkin, Strike, and October. He was a major pioneer in montage, both in theory and in practice, and he really just pushed the movement forward, which is why he comes up a lot in my classes, and I think this would be another, this is another great topic to share with all of you. So something just to get out of the way. Montage is a type of editing, but not all editing is montage. This is something that I feel like I see a lot in my notebook. Um, as I like go back through, I see montage does not equal editing. Good to know. Great, moving on. When Eisenstein really came up with this idea of montage, he really wanted it because he saw film as a medium for more than just mere entertainment, a way to get some laughs and go home. He saw it as a way for serious social change. And while that has continued in some ways since him and his movement, he really just like pushed it forward and showed how film sequences can be designed in a way to create a further meaning to enlighten the masses and to teach people, inspire people, and move people. The theory of montage includes five types of montage. Metric, rhythmic, tonal, overtonal, and intellectual. Metric is probably the easiest one to understand, and it's about the length of the specific shots, not about the content within them. So it doesn't matter if an action is in place, if it's been, if every shot is going to be, say, four seconds, every four seconds, we have a cut. This could also be used with steadily shortening clips as they go. So say you're starting with like six seconds, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, etc. But once again, it still is regardless of the content within the shot. Rhythmic montage is the most widely used montage. And this is not about the timing, but about the content of the shot in question. So this would be like as an action unfolds, but at a reasonable point to make a cut. Rhythmic montage is about creating a visual pattern within the shots, maybe a visual pattern of continuity. It really helps with pacing shots. And a big example of this would be from the Battleship Potemkin, the Odessa step sequence, when the soldiers are coming down the stairs. and then especially the baby carriage moment because you see the content is driving the shots, not the length of the shots themselves. and time can really be warped like this, and extra meaning and emphasis can be placed on the objects that are given more or less time. Then we have tonal montage. Tonal montage has to do with visual or oral characteristics of a shot that can kind of cross over from one to the next. Uh, it could also be an uh, editing decision made by shared emotional characteristics between two shots. So maybe we have fog and fog, blowing sand could be the blowing fog, 
or make a sound bridge is an example of this in the sense that maybe you hear a scream and that scream transfers over to another scene. An example of that would be in Alfred Hitchcock's Blackmail. There's Alice screaming at a man on the street and then the landlady seeing the dead man in the room. That's kind of like a, uni uh, a shared scream between these two characters. The next form of montage is overtonal montage. Overtonal montage really combines metric, rhythmic, and tonal to create moods and atmospheres that can be shared or contrasted across scenes. Overtonal cuts to the overtones and perceived impressions by mixing the pace, ideas, and rhythms. A big example of this would be in The Godfather in the baptism sequence, as this references ideas of new life with the baptism right alongside the death with the murders. Michael Francis Rizzi, do you renounce Satan? I do renounce him. The final type of montage in the theory of montage is intellectual. And this is the one that really carried Eisenstein up in the theory world of cinema. This is when you cut according to the relationships between shots, and by cutting a certain way, that gives them that additional meaning. It introduces ideas and really highly charged and emotionalized sequences. One famous example is, once again, in the Battleship of Potemkin, there are shots of a stone lion. It's like lying down, then there's another shot of the stone lion's kind of sitting up, and then there's a stone lion sitting up. And this is meant to symbolize how the sleeping people of Russia are awakening. Something that's also relevant is this is that with the intellectual montage is the Kuleshov effect. So this is when you'd have like the same one shot varied with different shots and how the audience will perceive something else. So maybe so there's like a man, he's kind of like has a neutral expression. Maybe this is a neutral expression. Anyways, then you cut to a shot of soup. Then you're like, oh, the man's hungry. But what if instead you cut to a shot of a funeral? Oh, the man is sad. And then I think they cut to a shot of like a woman, like looking promiscuous. It's like, oh, he's lustful. But it's the same shot of the man, but it's just by what you put it with that gives it new meaning. And that's kind of what this intellectual is. It's rising above the context that it was initially given, which I think is amazing. It's also important to note that methods of montage are not mutually exclusive. You can have more than one going on at once. You can have all of them in the same piece. It really doesn't matter. It's just however you want to convey your ideas in the piece. And that wraps up this video. If you learned something, be sure to give it a like, comment down below any feedback or questions you have, and remember this is a weekly series, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my general videos and the next Film Friday. See you next time. Bye!